Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Silver Squeeze, Phase 2. Let's explore. <laughs> You know, we've talked about this silver short squeeze that uh, many people thought was actually launched by Wall Street Bets on Reddit. But you know what? There's a lot of different communities on Reddit. I've kind of learned a little bit more about that particular social media platform. But uh, there's people that thought it was a trap. I've actually reported about it. In fact, there's others that thought that uh, the Wall Street Bets votes were actively campaigning against uh, a short squeeze on silver. Mainly that took the form and manifests itself on the SLV markets. But I have learned a lot in the last few days about uh, this particular uh, transition from uh, the SLV and the ETFs and trying to short that market once they found out very quickly that that was not so easy to do. In fact, some people will make an argument uh, and a fair one that it really never was a short squeeze. A couple of dollars increase in the silver spot price is really not that much to speak of, especially when we've seen $30 silver before last year for other reasons and just given the way the markets are. I think there was an attempt and it certainly contributed to it. However, I believe there's other factors involved that uh, play a larger role and that is mainly this shift of physical demand and if you're going to really shake things up that's really where it needs to be and so several in the community have made me aware of this new phenomenon that was started kind of around the same time uh called wall street silver yes instead of wall street bets this is one that's uh related to kind of uh, sending a message to wall street not through shorting a failing company or several failing companies whose business models are, have become outdated, uh, knowing that they're going to be pumping up the price of a stock that is destined to fail from a company. But that is something that's been money for thousands of years. Yes, silver. And you know, folks like myself and others have been talking about this metal for quite some time, and we've seen its ups and downs. And make no mistake, there will be ups and downs with the metal in the future. Hence why I'm cautiously optimistic about the metal in general, and I've said that for this year and made my predictions, which are relatively bold for me, someone who is very cautious when approaching this metal. And why is that? Why do I give a contrarian point of view about silver? Because I believe the metal sells itself. Uh, just the very nature of what the metal is uh, and understanding the history of it and understanding its use and its, uh, and its diversity um, in industrial, bio, medical, and technological factors, really, if that sells itself. And when you see silver as a commodity, as has been the case over the past years, especially since 2011, silver has been recognized as that commodity. Um, just as even more so than as a monetary metal. But it is traded. It is traded on the COMEX. And this community, though I don't agree with everything they say uh, or they stand for, I do believe that uh, a movement towards accumulating silver is never a bad thing as long as you understand what's involved uh, in terms of how silver is priced from out of the mine and even exploring mines, uh, as I've talked about and have uh, I've covered some uh, silver and gold uh, exploration companies and miners out there, but also with how it's fabricated. And right now we are seeing a, a lot of demand for fabricated silver, such as you see here in the form of these uh, bars, whether they be extruded, struck, um, poured, or or what have you and also we also have not only do we have bars and beautiful forms such as you see here but we also have uh, silver rounds and silver coins and the king of the silver coins is the eagle and there's where in lies what's happening with the physical that separation which we saw last year in 2020 that separation 
of spot price from the actual price that you pay and the price that you sell the metal for. That's right. If you were to take a Silver Eagle in your collection and go to any local coin shop and they offer you spot price for it, you can laugh in their face. No one in their right mind would sell a Silver Eagle for spot price these days because most places are paying you three, four dollars above spot while they're selling them for seven, eight, nine, ten dollars plus over spot. Essentially, those spreads between what you can sell the Eagle for and what you could buy it for is a little bit wider than normal, but essentially it is not as bad as some people think. Um, be considering that it's a we're in essentially in a bull market uh, for silver right now, just as we were um, last year for silver. Everybody was looking for silver uh, to sell, um, um, or, and people were looking for, I mean, to buy, and uh, that is the key. And the local coin shops, online dealers, and the like are all willing to pay more for an item that they can move very, very quickly. I was in at my local coin shop uh, recently, and uh, they were uh, had several 100-ounce bars laying out um, that they had ordered for a customer that, you know, that basically they were already sold before they even got in the door. And that's what's happening. Silver is in demand. But you know what? Gold is too. Uh, both metals are. But you know, what they say about silver, silver is one of those metals that is, um, it's easier to pay uh, $35, $40 for an ounce of silver than it is to pay, you know, um, $2,000 for an ounce of gold. But there are ways to buy gold too. Uh, but really, in a sense, uh, if you want to send a message, it's easier to do it and take your chances with silver in that regard, sending a message to Wall Street for those of us who buy silver from not just Main Street, but Elm Street. That's right. Um, from our suburbia uh, neighborhoods, from where it is, it's the people. And uh, the silver is kind of the, uh, the people's metal in that regard. Um, and, um, and understanding it, I think, is crucial as we move forward in this really what's considered to be a phase two of a silver squeeze. Not necessarily a silver short squeeze, but a squeeze on the physical supplies and, um, and, and understanding that the more people that buy silver, well, uh, the less of it is out there in the marketplace. We take it out of the marketplace. Um, that's going to send a message uh, to uh, the powers that be, whoever they are and whatever they are, you know, whether it be the Federal Reserve, which I think would send a stronger message to them if we do it, or banks in general, the large banks um, all around the world. Um, silver is a metal that uh, um, certainly has been controversial um, as of late, but really has been controversial for a while. People have been spooked by it. People have been excited by it. And uh, people are overjoyed by it. It's a beautiful metal. It really is. Um, it's the most reflective metal uh, that's out there. And I think uh, you know this movement in, in some of these social media platforms, like what we are seeing with Wall Street Silver, I think it's something uh, to see a community that is now 26,000 members strong since the 29th of January here in 2021. And so uh, how will it grow? What will happen? Well, we'll see. I, I looked over some of the posts there. I'm not a, a member of uh, really any other social media platform other than Instagram, but I'm I've been remiss to post on there and, and visit uh, there a whole lot just because I spend so much time producing content and supporting others who do the same in YouTube. But um, I hope this video will make it over to that community, the Wall Street Silver, to let them know that we're cheering them on, but also to just uh, warn them and give them a little bit of perspective about silver. Um, you know, it is, and there's a lot of information there, but... Uh, no matter where you read it, whether it be in Wall Street Silver and that Reddit community or any other community. community. By the way, uh, as a side note of looking on there, and there's several other silver communities uh, that are around. There's one called Silver Squeeze. There's one called Silver Bugs that has over 70,000 members. It's probably been a around for quite a while. There's um, So there's uh, other communities out there within uh, Reddit but uh, nonetheless, I think there's 
along with the number of communities and information that's there, you have to parse through what's good and what's bad information, just like you have to do with anything. So do your own due diligence and research. But here is the the ultimate warning, and it may be very basic for people, and I understand this, and I don't want to seem like I'm talking down to anybody, but understand this, that uh, when you buy silver, you should never buy it out of a fad or out of a movement or what have you. You are buying it as an insurance policy, as a hedge against economic instability, um, if you're not buying it also for its beauty and as a collector, which mainly that's kind of what I do buy. These these bars you see here, these 10-ounce bars, I bought these back in, in the 90s and early 2000s just because I thought they looked freaking cool. Yeah, that's right. I just think they look neat. You know, it's like having your own pirate booty of silver thereby. And of course, I'm not really fully grasping. It, but they were cheap back then, you know. Uh, but it's one of those things where now as time has passed on, well, they have done very well for me, even adjusted for inflation. I've actually come out ahead. But that should not be the motivation for buying silver. It's not to get rich. It's not to get ahead. It is to simply preserve your wealth over the course of a long time because you're not going to preserve your wealth with short trades of really any commodity, but especially something that has been recognized as money and been utilized as money for thousands of years, silver. And so that is the message that I would like to send to the um, to the community of Wall Street Silver. Um, and so I hope somebody will share this there and um, and get the message out there as an encouragement that as you accumulate, understand the premiums that you buy or that you spend on silver, and that you may or may not recover some of those. Um, you can only hope to recover some of those um, when you uh, go to sell if the price remains the same. Now, likely, if you keep buying, the price will probably continue to go up because of supply-demand principles, and that's the other message I want to send. Um, I bought silver when it was unloved, and it was greatly unloved in times of great stagnancy, if that's even a word, in the mid-2000s and in the mid-90s, there was not a whole lot of action going on in silver. Not many people were talking about it. That's when I bought most of my silver. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, and it's something that I believe people should buy uh, through times of when it's low. And, uh, and maybe buy a little bit more um, when it's lower. And maybe buy a little bit less when it's higher. Um, but in the end, you have to do what's right for you and your loved ones when you purchase silver and uh, and understand the premiums you buy understand the price and understand that price movements can move up or down just like is the case with any commodity but also uh, understand that um, you know that this is something that is a long-term proposition and that long-term proposition will serve you well and that patience of stacking because that's what it's about. It's about stacking um, and accumulating to preserve your wealth and saving in silver. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video as we march on through phase two of the silver squeeze. And it looks like it's kind of just beginning here, but there's been an increased demand. And, it, and in order for it to really work, it must be sustained. In other words, those of you who are new and accumulating these metals, you have become stackers, and these and stackers is something that is is essentially it's accumulated accumulation of silver, uh, one on top of another, over a period of time. And that period of time, in order for it to really work for you, has got to be an extended period of time, uh, using the method of dollar cost averaging. So there you have it. I hope you found this video encouraging, and I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate, please share, comment, and subscribe.